Hello there and welcome back. Indeed, welcome for the first time to those who just dived in to see this particular video. Uh, my name is Eamon Killian. I've been doing a short set of video tutorials on how to get started using the excellent IBM software for all your cloud needs. Um, what I've been covering so far has been fairly in-depth at stages. Uh, we've touched on some Docker, we've touched on some uh, machines, virtual machines, storage, etc. Indeed, in the very last uh, video tutorial, we covered how to set up a network attached storage. Um, we will be using this network attached storage very soon, um, but I thought I'd segue at this stage to introduce Viata. So what is Viata? Well, Viata is a software-based virtual router, virtual firewall, and it has a series of VPN products for IP networks, uh, both IPv4 and IPv6. So what, if, you know, what does that actually mean? What does it allow you to do? Well, one of the core features of IBM software and one of the uniques is that you can actually um, rent on an hourly or a monthly basis bare metal machines. We have covered installing uh, software on some virtual machines previously. Uh, but we've always chosen to take the standard ones. We're going to start moving into some more deep configurations over the course of the next uh, several tutorials. And I thought it would be an apt moment to segue into Viata and actually using Viata on software. But of course, if you've never come across Viata before and you've never used Viata before, it can be somewhat daunting. So. What I'm going to do in this video is show you how I got started using Viata uh, by using the rather excellent tool of VirtualBox. Um, VirtualBox will allow us to create a network on my Mac here, or if you're using Windows, on your Windows server, um, and to install a Viata and to then configure up some virtual machines as well within uh, VirtualBox, and then to show how they can use the Viata as a router to route between one and the other network. So what we're actually going to cover is, uh, or our plan of attack here, is to obtain the VMI OS image from the old internet, to obtain and install VirtualBox, uh, to grab a Windows 7 VirtualBox, again, if you've never used VirtualBox, this could come in quite handy to actually see how you do these things. Then we're going to grab some uh, Linux. I'm going to use damn small Linux because it's only about 50, 60 meg. Um, we're going to uh, configure VirtualBox for private networking so that we can use host-only adapters. And I'm going to configure one class B address on a private 172.16 and one private class C address on a 192.168. Then we're going to create a new VirtualBox machine and install VYOS, or we're going to install Viata. Um, we're going to change the VYOS, so we're going to go through some early configurations. It would be exactly the same as doing this on software. Um, so we're going to change the root user, we're going to set up a host name, we're going to set up a domain name, um, we're then going to set up the interfaces, then we're going to go back and boot our Windows 7 VirtualBox and our damn small Linux VirtualBox. Each of those will be on a different network. One of them will be on the 192.168 that we set up and one will be on the 172.16. Uh, we're then going to show, you know, perfectly naturally that they can't ping each other because there's no routing. Um, then we're going to set up, go back onto our Viata and set up static routes on our VYOS, on our Viata, for those two networks. And then we're going to show how you can ping those machines because our Viata will be acting as our router. So that will, summarizing all of that, show how you can use, install, configure a Viata machine to be your router and then we will start to build on that in subsequent videos to show how you can use Viata within IBM software to essentially do all kinds of crazy. Um, you can set up a huge network on the software infrastructure 
and leverage the properties and capabilities of Viata so that you can set up all sorts of intricate networks to effectively mirror how you do things within your own physical environment, but you can then do it within IBM software. And Viata is a core tool to get used to within uh, IBM software. Of course, once you have your Viata configured and you're using it within VirtualBox, you can also start to learn more advanced techniques around uh, Viata, uh, VYOS, things like ACLs and setting up VPN connections. So we'll be covering those as well. But at the moment, this is my plan of attack and hopefully this will go off without a hitch and it will provide you with some early introduction on how to use a Viata, uh, albeit within VirtualBox, and then we will move uh, down the line to using Viata with exactly the same commands on IBM software. Thanks very much. Let's get started with uh, grabbing some VYOS from the old interweb. So, welcome back. Um, I just thought to myself, you know what, a picture would paint a thousand words here, and uh, there was a thousand words as you can see on the uh, previous screen. So let's, uh, let's take a, a pause for breath before we start downloading these packages to picture in our minds what it is we're about to configure. So as you can see here, we're gonna have a Viata, a virtual router, which is gonna be running VYOS Community Edition. We're gonna create two networks, a 172 and a 192 network. We're gonna configure two interfaces on the Viata one being on the 172 network and one being on the 192 network. So ETH0 and ETH1. We're then going to instance a DSL, damn small Linux machine, version 4.4, and we're going to configure an Ethernet interface on there. Uh, this could be via DHCP, um, or we could configure it by hand to be on the 172.16 network. We're going to ping between these two machines between these two interfaces to show that that's actually up and running and working. We're then going to configure a Windows 7 machine and give it a, an ETH0, not an ETH1, which will be on the 192.168 network and that will be pinging its 192 partner on the 192 network on the Viata. Then we're going to configure routing on this Viata so that we can actually ping between these two machines so that we can actually get a ping working between these two machines. So that's what we're going to be doing today and we should get a response back from that machine. Whoops. So that's what we're about today. Uh, pictorially that shows how we're going to do it. So what we're going to need to do first is we're going to need VirtualBox. This is where you go to get VirtualBox. If you've never actually uh, installed it before, you will download it from here if you're on Windows or you're on uh, Mac or you're on a Linux machine or indeed even a Solaris machine, you can download it from here. For me, I'm on um, uh, Yosemite, so I'd click on this link and it would download that actual uh, virtual machine. Next, you're going to need VYOS, which you get from this address. To get the software, you will need to pick the virtual 32-bit VYOS image here, the ISO here. So, next, you will need damn small Linux if you're going to follow this tutorial closely. Again, this is the address here. There's pre-built virtual boxes, and you can download damn small 4410 from this address here. And lastly, if you didn't know already, um, Microsoft now actually at modern.ie allow you to download uh, virtual machines with uh, Internet Explorer on there and you can actually have a pre-configured uh, VBox machine for Windows. In this instance I've downloaded a Windows 7 machine, you would just pick it from here whichever one you want to actually do. I chose, uh, I think it was IE10 on Win7, and then you choose whatever platform you're on. So I'm on VirtualBox 
for Mac and that will download the image. So download VirtualBox, download your ISO 32-bit virtual image from VYOS, download a damn small Linux machine and download a, a Windows 7 machine. Once you've got those machines, you will then have a folder that looks pretty much like this. Uh, I've actually unzipped the DSL here, but you will have a downloads folder that looks pretty much like this. And that basically will give you the building blocks that you're going to need to follow the rest of this tutorial. Uh, thanks very much. Join me in part two. Now that we have all of the images down, we will start to get things configured. My name's Eamon Killian. Thanks for watching part one.